Hi everyone. We're going to be making this watercolor pencil bee and flower today using reference photos. Let's take a look at our reference photos. I have a photo of a bee and a photo of the flowers that I'd like to use. I'm going to be using this watercolor paper. This is student grade watercolor paper that I buy for my class, but um, it's not always available to students. You could look on Amazon. You can also go down to Michael's or um, even places like Target or Fred Meyer and get a watercolor sketchbook. Just make sure that it says watercolor on it. That way you know that the paper is thicker and that it has indentations to keep the watercolor in. We're not using watercolor per se, we're using watercolor pencils today, but we will be using water. So you need to have a thicker kind of paper. If you don't have either of these kind of papers, you're welcome to use regular printer paper and it will probably look just fine. Using our reference photo, we're gonna take a look at the basic shapes of this bee. I can see that the eye is an oval that the head is an oval around that. We have a curved triangle for the proboscis, and we have the front of the body and the abdomen back here. Also the wings, the legs look like they are in sections. So I'm gonna have my bee right about here and the flowers surrounding it. So the bee is toward the top of the paper, not exactly in the middle, a little to the side so that it will make a better composition. The eye is black, so I'm going to start with the eye. The proboscis to me looks like a rectangle with a little bit of a mouthpiece on the side here. So let's make the furry part of the top. It looks a bit like this, coming around here. And here is our fuzzy fur on the top. Fuzzy little guy. Next we have what I would call a square with rounded sides to it. So let's add that here. It attaches to the head right about here. So I'm going to draw a rounded square right there. And you can see that we have the abdomen, which is an oval that is pointed at the end. It's almost an eye shape, as you can see. So I would say that the abdomen is larger than the front half of our B, so it needs to be larger than this. So I'm going to say that it's going to end right about here. This allows me to know where I'm going so that I can easily draw it. With a curve that goes up and down at the point, and the same way up to the body. There's our abdomen. Okay. And we have some legs here. The legs look like they are in sections. So we're going to draw a simple curved line right here for the front leg. It gets thicker right here. So I'm going to draw an oval like this. Another oval right here that's a little bit smaller and a little foot right here with some little toes. This is going to actually be connected with yellow, so I'm not too worried about it right now. These are the antennas. It's simply an owl that looks like this. The other one is right here next to it. It's a little hard to see in the picture, so I am going to bring it out here so that you can see it a little bit better. 
we can see this other front leg right here. This is the middle leg. These have six legs, so there's three on this side and there's three on the other side. We can't really see the other side, so we're just gonna draw the ones on this side. You can see that it's in two oval sections. And it's about, comes about here, so we know where we're aiming for. So we have one section that comes right out of here, and the next one comes right here, with a little bit of the feet there. And those are also black, makes it easy. You can leave a little shine mark too, because they actually have very shiny, shiny legs. The back leg actually comes up and down. See this right here? So we're gonna start it about next to this one. It's coming out of the side. It comes right about there. And it goes up like a triangle. And it comes down this way. We're just gonna draw a guideline that looks like this so we know where we're going. We're going to draw the top part of the leg here, which is very rounded, very strong. Back legs are very strong on the B. And right here. Yeah, there are some little toes at the back. Okay, so we have a pretty good looking B as of now. And I am going to be adding some texture to the fur. You can see that I am going very thickly with my colored watercolor pencil. Bringing that in a little closer because that circle seems to be smaller to me. So I love about this that you can change things as you see them. The wings are going to be coming from the top part of the bee and they come right about out like this. That's the center. So I can draw one half of it up here, goes around like this, comes right into the B about there. I think that could be longer. So I'm going to add a little bit more to it right there. And then when I paint it, it will look just fine. And here is the other wing coming over this way. It's got a narrow top and the back right there. We're going to be adding the veins in afterward. So the top looks like it is black and shiny. So I'm gonna leave a shine mark right there. We can see that this is a yellow fur. So we're going to add that on with yellow in a few minutes. I'm going to widen this just a little bit. And now it's time for the stripes. And I think there is, that is completely up to you. Um, if you want your bee to look realistic, try to make the stripes curve a little bit so it looks like it is going around the round part of a body. The telltale stripes of the bee. Add a little brown in here.
add some things. Some shading. And we have a bee. Here's our inspiration for the flowers. I'm going to be drawing them a little bit larger than this picture shows. And I'm not going to put as many because I don't want them to be um, competing with the bee in my picture. So I think I will do three because I think an uneven number looks the best. Okay, let's get started. I'll demonstrate the first flower. And then I will go faster on the other ones so you can see how easily they're done. The first flower is going to be right about here close to the bee, probably the one that he's aiming for. And I'm going to make an oval so it shows that it is in 3D. It has a uh, magenta center, so I'm going to be making it look kind of like a donut. So here's my black around it. And the magenta. flowers. I'm going to be drawing them in orange so you can see them a little bit better, but I'm going to draw very lightly. I'm going to be darkening the center with some orange. When I add the water, this will blend in with the yellow. And add a little bit of shading on this one right here. Make sure that when you add your centers that they are going the direction that the petal is growing. If you'd like to add a little bit of shading around the edges, now is the time you can round the shading to the tips so that it looks like it is rounded and maybe going down into the bottom. You can also do this last but I like to do it first because I like to blend the yellow into the orange.
saw that I needed in here. I added some stems and some leaves, which I'm going to be finishing with my watercolor pencil and some watercolors at the end. But right now, it's time to paint. So what you need now is a jar of water and a paintbrush, that's all. I'm not going to paint the bee because it can take some of the colors out and make it difficult. We will start with the flowers and go from there. Painting carefully around your magenta so not too much of the black goes in. Make sure you clean out your brush each time you choose a different color. So you can see with watercolor pencils that the watercolor pencil turns into paint when you add water to it. You will see now how the colors blend as we add water. Notice how the shading, when you rub over and over it, how it blends into the yellow, making it look more like our subject. Be careful that you don't go too much into the color below. You can see that it can get into your other colors. If that happens, simply get a tissue and dab it out. You can see by my quick video that a couple of times I tried to go into the other color by accident and I simply wiped it with a tissue, and that helped to take out the color I didn't want. Let's see what this looks like when it's ready for the next step. I'm now adding some color to the leaves, but I want you to notice in all of this how thickly I colored things. If you color with lots of white showing like this, your color will not come out as well as when you color it solidly. So make sure when you are drawing your colors in before you watercolor paint, that you're coloring very thickly and nicely so that when you do add water to it, it will look beautiful. Now I'm going to add a very simple background. Be careful when you do this to always make sure that your lines are in similar directions. In other words, the whole sky is done in one direction. The reason that I did the leaves in different directions so that when I add water, it looks like there are leaves in the background. And here is my finished product. I added water to the lines that I made in the sky around the bee, and I added water to the leaves at the bottom to make them look like they're soft and out of focus. I hope you enjoyed making a realistic bee picture using reference photos. I know that I enjoyed making it. See you next time.